Hello and welcome to the Social Recruiting Show. Yes, it's Wednesday. Yes, we're confusing you, but it has to be done. I'm Katrina Collier. I'm a social recruiting trainer and speaker, and I'm, of course, joined by my gorgeous co-host, employer branding genius, non-cast wearing, thank God, Audra Knight. <laughs> SRSC special. Yay. Well, mm -hmm. sense Today we are joined by Craig Fisher, and I have a post-it note because his job title is way too long. Head of marketing at Allegis Global Solutions and founder of Talent That Knife, better known as at Fish Dogs. Welcome, Mr. Fisher. <laughs> Thank you, Katrina. Great to be here. Thanks, Audra. How are you guys doing today? Very good. You don't want to Better know. Better than Katrina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ran Disrupt HR London last night. I'm tired, but it was so good. <laughs> great uh, yeah. So I want to hear more about that if we have time today. That would be great. I'd love to hear more sure. about Disrupt HR London. Okay. Um, so uh, just a little bit about me. I'm Craig. I uh, do oh, recruiting I stuff. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Since. Uh, since 1995, I've been doing recruiting stuff, and before that, I was a, a drug rep in the, in uh, the OR and um, did all kinds of fun uh, sales stuff. But uh, I um, I do a few things. I am a consultant. Hang on, in hang the... on. How do you go from drug rep to recruit? Yeah, see, I can see this correlation. That's no, not right. I totally <laughs> sales. <laughs> It's a recruiter. That's why you're probably oh, so more I just went drug and recruiter. Okay. Well, so, yeah, well, no, I've, been in, I've been in the London recruitment scene for too long. <laughs> I was a drug rep and then I uh, sold hospital equipment uh, yeah. in the OR. And uh, and uh, about the mid 90s, when Bill and Hillary Clinton kind of screwed up um, all the, uh, the way that people could sell hospital mm -hmm. equipment and pharmaceuticals um, with the HMO debacle, uh, a lot of my friends started recruiting physicians for a living instead of right selling hospital equipment and, and pharmaceuticals so yeah. that was a big trend um i got drafted into it hey yeah. craig less travel more money we're killing it over here so yeah. i started that people, way not products. yeah yeah <laughs> basically and i got into it and turned out i was really good at it and i was hooked you yeah. know the way i got my first job uh selling pharmaceuticals was by hacking the system i <sighs> You know, I realized I wasn't going to uh, probably be the best um, student on paper uh, necessarily um, and, you know, lots of other things. And, and so I, I did some research about all the things that pharmaceutical companies look for for experience. And I took an extra semester of school to do an internship where I literally picked products from a warehouse of medical supplies and drove them in a van to doctor's offices and distributed them to uh, physicians and got the experience I needed to get noticed by Glaxo and got hired right out of school uh, doing that. So uh, a little bit of a little bit of the background of how I, you know, uh, view the job market and, and why I was interested in the recruiting field, because I felt like I could really help job seekers and really sell that to employers as well. So uh, that's how I got into it. Um, I rose quickly. Uh, I went from medical sales to tech sales in about a year because the tech boom, dot net, everything blew up. And um, I came uh, from, you know, this great sales background and I have a marketing advertising degree from the University of Oklahoma. And so I'm constantly sort of hacking the system with marketing tricks, mm -hmm. doing my own thing. And I rose quickly at Matrix Resources, where I started doing uh, tech recruiting and became their rookie of the year and then performer of the year and then, uh, you know, became a team leader. And uh, very quickly, after five years there, moved on to be a director at a larger organization where I implemented HR software all over the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, we recruited talent for um, all the big five at the time, big four. Uh, to implement SAP, Oracle, PeopleSoft, et cetera. And that's how I learned all about HR technology. And uh, love it. Um, you know, big fan still. Uh, yeah. after seven Do you still have years, the Cool Tools show? Still yeah. have the Cool Tools show. We haven't done one in years. No. Yeah. Why? Why? Lars and I are just busy. Too yeah. very busy. Mm. I just saw him here recently. I finally met him. We kept doing this thing. It was like this. <laughs> It's like we somehow missed each other. We finally, finally got to meet in July, which is cool. Lars, really? Yeah. First time? Yeah. Um, I mean, weird, yeah. right? Considering yeah. how often we both speak. But yeah, it was really cool to meet him. So. Uh, Lars and He's I so started so our... 
started one of our first businesses together uh, in like 2011 or 2012, something like that. Uh, way, back time ago. <laughs> way, way back in the day. Way, way back in the day, yeah. I didn't know uh, you guys had a business together. Uh, yeah, we did. I mean, technically, we still do, I guess. We don't really do much with it. But when we have projects that we do together, we actually have this uh, LLC that we can work under. So it's pretty fun. It's funny um, how long ago, like 2012 seems, though. Because mm -hmm. I just think there's been so much change in technology and recruitment, et cetera, in the last five years. It does yeah. seem like long. <laughs> and it's like it's not. It's kind of Very weird. long time ago. Well, and uh, I, I started TalentNet, uh, the TalentNet Twitter chat in 2008. Wow. Uh, so the wow. very first ever Twitter chat for recruiting uh, wow. started in, in the fall of 2008. Ten and, years ago, uh, next year. Boy, did we have fun. Yeah. So next yeah. year will be a very exciting um, Talent net in Dallas uh, mm. and in the fall. So that'll be our 10 year anniversary. It's fine in the fall. For, yeah, for we, we non American people who need a month. <laughs> that will be <laughs> probably September of, of next year is when we usually do it. Yeah, I'm still waiting to invite myself, you see. So 10 year anniversary could be fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so we're Animal, in September. Who knows? Animal <laughs> says he still has a show but doesn't broadcast and he still has companies, but they never do anything. <laughs> That's funny. They do so something does, sometimes. Tell it they obviously evolved from a Twitter chat. What mm -hmm. do you do now with it? So TalentNet has um, two shows a year and it's become the largest and longest running recruitment conference in the Southwest. Right. Uh, and we do a full day of uh, keynotes and workshops of recruiting and HR best practices uh, in Dallas at usually a major employer's uh, home office. Okay. And then the same thing in Austin on the first day of South by South Interactive. Yeah. And for the last few years, we've been at Whole Foods World Headquarters there. Um, and yep. we'll be doing that again on March 9th. Uh, oh. And it'll be... Um, It'll be awesome. Uh, I can just say the last one we did in Dallas, we had some very interesting panels. One was a Gen Z panel where we had some actual job seekers and um, and workers that were yeah. under the age of 25. And we got to pepper them with questions about how they view the wow, job. Wow, that's cool. And, uh, what they are interested in as far as uh, work goes. And the answers, answers were very interesting. So we're going to repeat that in Austin on March 9th. And you can get tickets at talentnetlive.com for that. Oh, cool. And uh, they are selling fast. So look out for that. That's going to be fun. Hey, and you're both invited. Do you want to come speak? Um, I'm not yes. in the country. I, I, I'll be there. I think I'm in Australia. <laughs> Audra, yes, you should come. And uh, Animal, if you're oh, yeah, listening, you, you should, you should attend too. What? Does Animal do yeah, live no, stuff? No. I'm on a plane uh, going the wrong way. Animal and I have been at one conference together, I believe, uh, in Toronto. I feel like he's like the mystery person that's voice only. So we'll uh, see. Maybe he'll do it. Animal, what year was that that we did that conference? Uh, I think it was 2011 or 10, something like that. It might have been 2012. Uh, but I got a, I got a personal walking tour of downtown Toronto from the recruiting animal, Michael Kellerman. Awesome. It was wow. one of the best experiences. So you've seen behind the mask. Yeah. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So I can't because I'm flying east and not west on that day. Sorry. Got it. Well, I haven't been home for nearly three years. I think it's it's about time. To be fair, it's, it's quite a so party. It's September, September could be there. It's uh, March 9th is the mm -hmm. next one uh, in yep. Austin yep. at Whole Foods headquarters. Town no, the September one. one. That, that yeah. I might have. Uh, yeah, the September one. We don't have the date pinned down yet. We're still working on that. We're actually trying to do it at um, at the. Omni at the new Texas Star uh, Dallas Cowboys practice facility. It's an amazing place. Cool. And it actually overlooks uh, Dallas Cowboys football practice as, yeah. right, as you're having a conference, which is amazing. So uh, well, we're that's to work awesome. that out. Yes. Very, cool. very, very cool. So, oh, sorry, Audrey, you were going to say something. Did I? No? Oh. So we're having an, an SRSC special. And as this was all your idea, Audrey, because again, I'm just too tired from last night. Tell me exactly why we're having an SRSC special. And what does that even mean? Well, first, the one reason I thought of you, Craig, is that I think if I'm correct, you've done everyone except for one. Is that right? That's what happened. That's correct. I did the very first uh, SRSC and have uh, keynoted or 
uh, led workshops in every other one, mm -hmm. uh, except for you one. You had a good excuse. I had a good excuse. I was getting married yeah. for the one in Boston yeah. two summers ago, three summers ago. Yeah. Can't remember. That was actually my first one. Yeah. Yeah. But for people that don't know, it's the Social Recruiting Strategies Conference mm -hmm. twice a year. Um, bit, quite, very big. I'd say about 300 people. Really fun, fun uh, conference. But I thought, yeah, we could talk about maybe just a little preview of what you're talking about without giving anything away. And then you, if we have time, we do can you do think we're time. biased though? Because we always have like a speaker reunion that involves wine. And lots of friends. <laughs> well, my first one though, I absolutely loved it, and I didn't know anyone. Yeah. Oh, okay. So and it's I was good. It it's a good, awesome it's a good show. So it's the yeah. talent net crowd mostly. Um, and that's how SRSC kind of got started. So uh, Kara will admit to this. She and I collaborate. Um. We, <laughs> collaborate. We share lists, and um, and she looks at the talent net agenda and says, "All right, what looks good there?" And then they do it in other parts of the country at SRSC, which is fun. Um, that's not the only thing they do. They do a lot of things well, but that's part of it. And so the talent net crowd is great. Talent net's a real family. And mm -hmm. uh, and SRSC feels the same way, and it's got its own vibe mm -hmm. now, which is really cool. Yeah. I'm that's a huge why I keep fan. coming. That's why I keep coming yeah. back in January. Yes, yeah. it's like my it's one, well. one a year that I will self fund to kind of thing, as opposed yeah. to the rest of them. Yeah. Like, eh. yeah, and oh. and I get to catch up with you all. <laughs> yeah, and San Francisco is just amazing, right? It's yeah. it's really right. cool, even it's, in uh, January, where it's well, really yes. chilly. It's Sydney. <laughs> it's Sydney, Australia, in America, if you ask me. Yeah, there yes. you go. I like that. Yep. With those animals, what are they called again? With seals? Slightly weirder. Sea lions. <laughs> sea lions. Those are yeah. amazing. Kind of yes. gross, but kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're they're smelly, yeah. but they're they're great. <laughs> and to be fair, you don't get weirder animals lying around the dock in Sydney. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> no, not as much. <laughs> you only get weird Australians lying around the dock. However, there is a nicer temperature in January in Sydney, but you know, anyway, that's another whole conversation. <laughs> I totally agree. Winter in Sydney is quite nice. <laughs> Which is in the summer. Yeah. So <laughs> right. March is the first time actually I'm going home where it's warm. Usually I go home in June or July, which is mm -hmm. crazy. But it's freezing. I'm like, what am I doing? But anyway, that'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. Is that, uh, is that if Trevor Vass is listening, uh, we still need to have that conversation about me coming back to the ATC. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. Good idea. Right. So, Good idea. so are you going to give us a sneak peek of your... Recruiting tools. Yeah, Obviously, bit. that did make me sit up. Considering you're a marketer and you said recruiting tools, I was like, uh huh. I want to know. Yeah, are they are they generic recruitment tools? Are they more employer brand tools or sourcing a little of everything? Well, okay. So uh, you two probably know what my platform is, right? I am a big believer in um, inbound recruitment, right? Uh -huh. And so yeah. you put great things out in the world to attract people back to you. Uh -huh. And I feel like you know you, the individual recruiter are just as important to your company's recruitment efforts as the company's brand is. So all recruiters have their own brand. Gotcha. And it's just like everybody's uh, view of their job is sort of like boxed in to their direct manager and their peers on mm -hmm. their team. That's your view of your company, right? It's not necessarily yeah. a complete top, top down thing. Uh -oh. And so a job candidate's view of your company is sort of the same thing. It's you, it's that person, right? Yeah. Um, and so the people they interact with are all very important uh, recruitment coordinators, anyone that does anything um, to help that candidate through the job process mm -hmm. should have a good public facing brand, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm all about. So I call that looking like a recruiter worth talking to. That's exactly right. Uh, what recruiters makes... don't get brand because they're like, that's yeah, marketing but, speak. But like, if what, you just look like you... somebody worthy of someone's time, right? What makes you interesting? at all, yeah, right? Exactly. If somebody, if you reach out to someone and they come back to check you out, which they will, because everyone snoops now, right? Yeah. This is, this is the, the snoop economy. The world um, of Google, I like that. Fancy. Yeah, it's, it's the snooping economy. And so the stalkers that you're stalking are stalking you back, absolutely. Can I borrow that and hashtag it and give, yeah, give it credit, obviously? Anything you I always, of yeah, snoop economy, <laughs> that's, yeah. I call yeah. it like recruiting in the age of transparency, but I kind of like the snoop economy is easier to say. Yeah, so they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna snoop about you and see what yeah. you look like. See if they can find a picture of you in a swimsuit or whatever they do, right? This is what people do. That's gonna um, be a lot. And so you might as well <laughs> serve you might as well serve up to them whatever you want them to see. Well, and it story. better be as interesting or better than the next recruiter that calls them about a similar job, right? And or at so, least not the same. At least well, it's a little different. 
be, 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 be human, yeah. be personal, right? You want to yes. make a good first impression with someone, right? Mm -hmm. Right off the bat, you tell them bad. something slightly personal or slightly embarrassing about yourself. And mm -hmm. they'll remember you much more than if you just tell them your name and your job title, right? Yeah. So yeah. But if you're LinkedIn profile, well, very buttoned down that's very boring it's boring people go to me oh my god i love your dogs it's like their opening statement i'm like you haven't even met my dogs it's really random but yeah. obviously they're fun and they're full of character and so therefore that's the thing i share yeah so they, and that's it i think everyone about, right? i think everyone should have three things that on a regular basis that are slightly personal that you can come back to uh that you can share all the time right so my three things are my three boys i've got three kids yeah. Uh, right. I live by the lake. So there's lots of pictures of the lake yeah. boats and sunsets. And then I travel all the time. Right. For yeah, so, business. so there's lots of travel photography as well. So cool yeah. photos in, in cities and, and crazy places. And so mm -hmm. I get a lot of people saying, hey, you know, we love seeing the pictures of your kids and your dogs and your mm -hmm. family and the lake, all that stuff. Great. A lot of people say, man, we love your sunset pictures. I used to do really yeah. elaborate sunset pictures and color them up. Um, but I'm still out running by the lake all the time and I'm out there constantly. So mm. there's, there's plenty of that. But three things. Everyone should have three things that they can feel like comfortable that. about sharing. Most and, dogs travel and probably might be a human man. Well, you know, you, you get into <laughs> a case. of spiritual quotes that go out every so often. But yeah, you, you know, get, one thing that you touched on that I think is really important because um, I get this a lot, right? I don't want to share photos of my kids. It's privacy, blah, blah, blah. But I love the way you've done that because it's kid one, two, and three. You haven't. That's right. You've, yeah, you get their privacy, which I think is so important. Well, like I say, the stalkers that we're stalking are going to stalk us back, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's the snoop economy. And you might as well serve up exactly what you want them to see. So yeah. I want to, you know, self just shamelessly market my kids, right, yeah. for my business purposes, but without using their names ever, right? Yeah. So we can keep them a little protected. Yeah. Uh, and so I've never posted their names online. They're always yeah. numbers one, two, and three sons. They're not allowed yeah, like to. That. Uh, comment on my Facebook post and they're not linked to me as family members on Facebook. I do have fake profiles for numbers one, two, and three sons. So there's right you there. Do? They are listed. <laughs> I do. Um, I, 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 actually, I think that's good though. Cause I will often say to my clients that you might want to have a separate Instagram account for those, the family private pics that perhaps you don't want out or do no, something no, like Craig's right. done. Like I, I regularly will quote Craig me, with his one, two, three. I'm I feel like that. Craig fan, to be fair. I, and right back at you. Um, but to me, having an extra account feels like more work. And I yeah, don't have I get that. that. So I don't yeah. have separate uh, Facebook pages and Instagram yeah. pages. I just recommend you are very diligent about keeping the things you want private in yeah, the garage, right? Yeah. Or right off the internet. Because um, yeah. it can be screenshot anyway, right? It so can be screenshot. And why would you want to post something that instantly alienates yeah. half your potential audience, right? If you're in yeah. business to make money, Everybody has money to spend, right? Yeah. So, okay. or, or obviously you're hiring and you don't want to put people off because you're having that's, a political rant or a religious rant or whatever well, rant you're having. And to me, that's so. making money, right? If you're hiring, right, yeah. your job yeah. is to do that. That's making you money. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, uh, but aside from personal things that you should post, you should also mm. post things occasionally or often that are just interesting to your target audience, right? So. Yeah things about the job search and resumes and how to do your job better and business and the economy of, you know, the human resources space and mm. things like this on a regular basis, you should constantly be posting to attract people back to you. And then the occasional personal thing, your three things, and then occasionally, mm. Hey, look at me, I'm going to be at a conference or watch my radio show or, you know, whatever mm. you look at our white paper, check out our job that we've uh, posted. That sort of thing. That's the ask. And so I like five gives to every one ask, right? Yep, the yep. Five to one give to ask ratio is something I've been talking about since the beginning, right? Since uh, I started speaking in 2009. It's uh, literally, I guess, 2008 because we had talent uh, live back then. Anyway, yeah, I started Eight talking about it way, way like back 10 then. 10 years next year. Like, yeah, it's insane. Greg, is that what the five to one behind you is? Or yes, it is. Five to oh, one, yes, cool. look at that. And uh, oh, here's the other one. Be human. Whoa, go the creepy yeah. stalking going on. You actually were looking at that? <laughs> <laughs> I like and, uh, and that over there, right behind me, that's my um, candidate experience plaque. Uh, uh, CA won some candidate experience awards when I was the head of uh, employer brand for CA Technologies. Is that the Kevin Grossman one? 
Yes, the Kevin Grossman one. He's just asked me to MC and speak at the one here in London on first. Ah, that'd be fun. So, so excited. Mm -hmm. I know. What an honor. So there was my oh, ask, right? Oh, There's me telling forward. you about my philosophy and yeah. whatever. So now I've got a give for you. Here's here's okay. my give. Uh, one Great. of the tools it's I'm going to talk about at uh, Social Recruiting Strategies Conference is mm -hmm. called Crowdfire. Crowdfire is an Crowdfire. app that you can download for free that mm -hmm. literally is an automated, it's a bot that mm -hmm. um, it scours all your web presences and gives you a daily or weekly wrap up of how you did that day with your content mm -hmm. engagement, how many people followed and unfollowed you mm -hmm. um, on every channel. Um, oh, I have heard of this. It's amazing. It's really yeah. cool. And it talks you through every but, step. But, but it also... But, but can you please make sure that nobody chooses the auto-tweet from that? Yeah, there's no auto-tweet. You have to go Are through and sure? select the articles that you want tweeted. And it shows you... No, no, no. I don't mean that. You know how there's a, a, a thing going... Oh, Crowdfire. I've had seven people follow me and 16 unfollow oh, me. Oh, yeah, that's it's annoying. That's that tweet. Oh, they don't do that. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing like that. They used to. Sure? Yeah, not I've Crowdfire. There's other ones that did, but I don't think yeah. it was Crowdfire. Um, Goes yeah, that one just to prove him wrong. Anyway, sorry. No. Well, I, I, it could be. I haven't found that feature. It might have done it years ago, maybe not anymore. That's possible because I haven't seen it recently. Well, so Crowdfire is pretty new. Crowdfire has changed, right? This is, this is fairly. This is fairly recent stuff. Crowdfire has been around for a while, but this platform that they've got is all revamped and it's pretty amazing. Cool. I'm gonna um, check it out. But it also shows you the um, the posts that are doing well in your network and who has shared them. It's a lot mm. like Write Relevance, which is another uh, tool that I really like. WriteRelevance.com. You can get you can start online and then download the app. It also tells you. Um, what posts are doing very well in your network and who has shared them and how many shares and likes they get. So, is that R-I-T-E or R-I-G-H-T? R-I-G-H-T, yep. The right correct spelling of the word. Yeah, just correct just spelling, just yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, so uh, I, I was listening to... I love over here, by the way, because she's just got the best surname ever, by the way. Yes, <laughs> She does. She how does, does that work? Right? No, no relation. Know. No relation? no relation, but best yeah. surname ever. Yeah, it's not my surname. I married into it, and I just won't get rid of it. Now I'm divorced. <laughs> right. Okay. It's one of the three things. <laughs> yeah, one of the three things. So, uh, yeah, Crowdfire and Write Relevance are two oh, things that I'm really big on right now. I used to use um, the uh, Hootsuite app that allowed you to schedule tweets ahead of time uh -huh. um, that basically gave you suggestions, and it was called Hootsuite Suggestions. And they discontinued it, and it, it was very disappointing for me. So, yeah, uh, Hootsuite, if you're listening, please bring that back. Um, well, so one of the projects, <laughs> one of the projects Lars and I did together was we went and trained the Hootsuite recruiters on how to use social media tools to recruit, which is yeah. ironic and fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was a few years ago. But because of that, uh, he and I both have lifetime pro memberships for for free of charge awesome. through Hootsuite, which is cool. Yeah, That's so I'm a huge. Cool. Hootsuite fan. I use it all the time. I use it for everything. And I even um, have all my teams using it as well. So a uh, big fan of that. And uh, but yeah. the suggestions app went away. So I need I need that back, please. Hootsuite. <laughs> Good. Until I then, I'll be using they're watching platform. the social recruiting show, aren't you, Audra? <laughs> That's right. So yeah, my, my SRSC talk is all about cool tools for yep. recruiting in 2018. And um, so they're not going to be the tools that people expect because I, I deal in the stock world, well, you see, they'll all be like, what's the latest email unearthing tool? Yeah, no, these are not going to be the tools that people expect. <laughs> yeah. um, some of them will be sort of corporate tools that are new yeah. and awesome, uh, ideal, things like that. But some yeah. of them will be just the apps that I use all the time to mm. make Craig and Allegis and TalentNet look really cool um, yeah. online. And uh, they're fun. And I actually walk people through how these apps work, how they apply to your day-to-day -day job, and mm. how you can start using them tomorrow to attract more of the right audience and do more of the right things in your daily life in a more efficient way because I'm all about hacks, right? I don't have time yeah. to sit around yeah, and right. play on the internet all day. You see uh -huh. me drop in and drop out. And that's when I stop for 10 minutes, get on my phone and do literally everything from my phone. Rarely ever from my desktop am I doing anything mm. on social media. Uh, good mm. to see that you are not, you know, clashing with somebody else. Audrey no, and I I'm sitting there reading, I'm just sticking the agenda over here. Um, we're reading the agenda going, oh my God, but we want to be in both sessions. Ah! <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yes. it's tough. Am I, am I 
uh, clashing with Joe. Is that it? No, you're not. No, anyone. you're on your own. Yeah. Oh, I'm on you're not Okay. I've got, go. I've got a main session. Hooray. All right. Yeah. Oh, Jeffrey, so, really tough. Oh, Jeffrey, I'm just tucked on the side somewhere. Kara I only mean because it's a panel. Actually, Kara I'm up against nobody everywhere. at the moment. Let's talk about metrics and there's no one there. Well, no one cares about that anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's what I figure. The war for attention or let's talk metrics. Metrics. Yeah, come to mind. Come to mind. The war for attention. That's right. Um, it is, no. That's like what you're talking about is part of that war for attention. It is. Like, we, we, we just, it's like this all day. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the <laughs> I shouldn't give this away. Um, my don't say, don't, don't, a good cool. friend and uh, and coworker Rachel Duran, who mm -hmm. works for me at uh, CA Technologies on our employer marketing team, um, is is now leading that team as I'm leading uh, things at Allegis, yeah. and she did a show yesterday for Paycom. Mm -hmm. It was a a Paycom webinar, and she compared uh, all things recruiting to Star Wars, which there's mm. there's a whole bunch of fun uh, memes and blog posts mm -hmm. that we talked about afterwards that could be built from all these. Anyway, I'm not going to give it away. Rachel, you're probably not listening, but I'm not going to give it away. No, but it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, that could be a good just head, you know keynote kind of speech. Absolutely. In fact, uh, is so. she speaking or is this the... Okay. <laughs> I'm confused. Is this the webinar? So remembering I've not yeah. had much sleep. The she webinar this, that may lead to more. She did a webinar for them yesterday, I believe, uh, for Paycom. Yeah. Okay. We need to find Big that. Big things might be happening. Shout but. out to Paycom. Oh, she and I are going to work up a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Probably a co-branded um, post first and then uh, probably uh, presentations beyond that. Speaking of three things, isn't one of hers the cool hair? It Rock is. And roll hair. Yep. Yes, That's, Rachel has. Yeah, I remember uh, her because of that. Because Rachel has things. awesome rock and roll hair, uh, yep. and if you follow her on Instagram, the Rachel Duran, her oh, daughter is the hair. cutest thing ever. She's so amazing, uh -huh. and uh, and her son's pretty cute too. I've met them both, and they are <laughs> awesome kids. So they come to my Halloween party um, mm -hmm. every year, which is fun, and uh, yep. and Rachel and I hang out all the time. You guys cool. take Halloween very seriously. We, we do. do. Uh, yes. <laughs> I do. I started yeah. thinking about it like two months before. I'm yeah. not following her. That's shocking. I am now. <laughs> yes, the Rachel Duran. I, Shout out. Her hair is cool. Yeah, it's a purple thing, right? <laughs> it is. Well, she mixes it up. I think she's had Sometimes pink. Sometimes it's pink. A, yeah. Yeah. She mixes it up. It's very cool. Sometimes she's kind of blonde, mm -hmm. uh, but with a good streak or two. I almost got to meet her. Um, I think she went to Grace Hopper this year, and I was supposed to go, but because of my leg, I couldn't. Yep, she's big into Grace Hopper. She created one of the uh, hottest trending um, fads, memes, and hashtags um, mm. for Grace Hopper ever uh, when we were working uh, with CA Technologies. And um, she does some really good work. She's amazing. What yeah. do you think was special about it that made it so amazing? Um, so we did Work, Love, Live. And... Um, it was basically just a, uh, a chalkboard that we had several of um, with someone's Twitter handle at the top. Mm -hmm. And then um, I work blank and people filled it out as they came to the booth. And then we held it up and took mm -hmm. a picture That's and posted fun. it to social media. And um, it just That's took fun. off, really it took off. Because I, right? I haven't got any time, but something like that is so simple. Yes. And then you get a load of content and you can spread it out over the year. It's not like you have to do it all in one go. Yeah, minimal I spend. I think it's so complicated. <laughs> yeah, minimal spend. Uh, that Massive was... reach because all reach. those people are going to retweet it and share it with their network. Massive. It, it yeah. went way beyond uh, yep. CA and Allegis and Grace Hopper. And people started using it uh, all over the place. And it even wow. got picked up in some major uh, uh, news publications online. So this it, it turned into a big deal. And so we do a lot of that sort of thing. So uh, Rachel is on my team at Allegis, even though she works for CA. Huh. Um, and so we're all about um, simple things, just a different way to look at a problem or an issue or a question and then package it in a way that people can consume. Huh. And if you can if you can do that um, and, you know, be uh, original about it and fun and uh, put together the right 
uh, content around that idea, uh, it will get picked up. So mm -hmm. I did this very simple survey of job candidates in the spring for Allegis, asking them how they feel about interacting with chatbots as part of the recruitment process, right? Mm -hmm. Silliest thing ever, but no one had thought to ask that question. And no, we're just back... gonna implement them without asking. Mm. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so I got back all these great data points from job candidates about yeah. how they feel about talking to chatbots um, through the assessment process or to mm. answer initial interview questions or to schedule interviews. Mm. What did they say? Uh, the data is great. Well, the vast majority of people were either cool or very cool with it. Yeah. Um, mm. the, the bottom 18 to 20% were very uncomfortable. So mm. the data says that while most people are fine doing this because it makes the process more efficient, Yeah. Uh, you still need the human touch, right? So mm -hmm. high tech doesn't overrule high touch, right? It's uh, still people that are yeah. going to be doing the recruiting. And uh, that's why our jobs aren't really in jeopardy because one of the top questions, so Allegis Global Solutions does the outsource recruitment for DXC Technologies, which is a massive tech company. It's the mm -hmm. conglomeration of CSC when they bought HP Enterprise, came together, mm -hmm. yeah. created DXC Technologies, right? Um, and so we implemented a chatbot, Olivia, on their career site. Mm -hmm. So if you go to uh, DXC Technologies career site, you can see a working model of Olivia, the chatbot, and ask it all kinds of questions. And I'm about to present a paper on the, you know, uh, job seekers ask the darndest things of chatbots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have some fun with this. <laughs> Job seekers say the darndest things to chatbots. On, uh, anyway, but one of the one of the main questions we found that people were asking right away were, uh, "Can we speak to a recruiter?" Mm -hmm. And so, right, uh, so the chatbot's good, but the recruiter is still very important. Sure. <laughs> aging myself <laughs> you think when you go to run your utilities or your bank and you're calling them and you have to go through 16 different things i mean actually vodafone are the best over here um, which is like at&t and you go through yeah. all of that and you my god my phone is ringing while i'm holding it but it's not the slightest bit disconcerting <laughs> <laughs> and um it's really weird whoever that is sorry um and, and you go through all of that and then they ask you to input it all again when you finally get through to any uh, so. worst so I get I just, it, but yes. at the same time, if it's going to help you get redirected to the information that you need. Yeah, some some chatbots kinda... are great, right? Like yeah. if I'm having a problem with my uh, satellite reception or cable yeah. TV or whatever, if yeah. they start the process and you know that it's some system bot. is checking yeah. um, and it's a chatbot, that there's uh, you know a process going on in the background that's getting you to the end you need, I'm fine mm -hmm. with that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, most people are. Most people say that the automated system is pretty good because a lot of the questions that people oh. ask are the automated questions, yeah. right? Yeah. Not a problem. Uh, with chatbots, though, people ask Olivia uh, things like, do you know Siri and will you marry me? And, like, <laughs> funny things like that. So. <laughs> And actually, I think another thing on that, taking from the consumer world, because often the frustrations we feel there, we just need to think about when we're doing our own career site. Like my, I'll often go into NatWest and it'll say to me, that's my bank, and it'll say, oh, if you want to do this, just ask the, the live chat. And I ask the live chat and they go, we can't help you with that. You need to call your business manager. And you're just like, it just told me I could ask you. Yeah, absolutely. And I get pissed off and I wonder why I'm with them. And, I'll, you know, and you, you're like... Mm. How come live chats aren't taking off in the sense that it's not a bot, but it's a person? Because I love that when it comes to customer service. I'd rather do a live chat than call. <laughs> well, and, and they are taking off. Um, so there are, especially marketing sites and product sites. Yeah, um, right. You know, but not recruitment so much. Not recruitment yet, but it, it uh, is going to happen because there's a lot of these um, live chat uh, sort of uh, apps that you can add to any web page that yeah. will start a conversation and pop up on your phone, right? Um, when oh, yeah. you when you have someone that wants to chat. And so, so you have a round robin a of recruiters, yep, that can that can do that. And that's actually what we're going to uh, with some of these implementations mm -hmm. of tools like Olivia, because when someone clicks or says, can I speak to a recruiter, then that mm -hmm. targets the live chat with a recruiter. Yeah, and and, and so that's how it that? works. DXC or DXZ? DXC. 
technologies.com. Cool. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it was. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go ask some really ridiculous questions after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you should because that gives me more interesting data for my paper. So yeah, yeah. there's gonna be a, a, an infographic and everything. Yeah. So it's gonna yeah, no, but I think it's really good, and I also think you're immediately going. It doesn't because everyone keeps saying to me, chatbots are gonna replace sourcing. And I don't agree. No. Yeah. Like, no, you know, sources. To find someone, sure, but people aren't responding now to your ridiculous messaging. Why would they respond to a chatbot? Like, what no, the hell? Sourcing, you know? sourcers are going to um, use chatbots and, um, and, and AI technology just like we do any other tool. Right? Mm. So if you know about Hiring Solved, right? You know about Hiring yeah. Solved. And you know the tool that they had um, basically on LinkedIn forever that gave you all everyone's email addresses. Um, they gathered so much data from giving that away forever that they built this amazing database of information, right? And so now they have this tool called Ray. And Ray is a, uh, a natural language search engine that can source people 24 hours faster than the fastest sourcer in the world. Right? It's amazing. Yeah. But that's it's just so, finding them. That's just finding them. So to me, no, sources actually make contact. So that's my. Some that oh, sorry, some do, some don't. But, as usual. But um, the, <laughs> the point is, somebody still has to run the search, right? Somebody yeah. still has to wind the clock. Somebody still has yeah. to be a sourcer and make sure yeah. that that's right. Uh, yeah. So, is the hiring manager being an idiot for what they're asking for? I've actually got yeah. this job requirement too. Yeah. You can't you can't tell a coordinator to do this. It still takes a skilled sourcer to sourcer yeah. to make sure the process is running right. This is just another tool. I mean, remember, uh, you guys aren't old enough to remember, but um, used to be, we <laughs> didn't have I'm mobile phones to use in recruiting. We didn't even have the internet when I started to use in recruiting. So everyone said, "Oh, the internet's going to replace recruiters." That's yeah. not true at all. Mm-hmm. It's another tool, right? Uh, so uh, I don't know if you know this, but Allegis group parent company of Allegis Global Solutions and Tech Systems and Aerotech and uh-huh. eight, uh, eight operating companies uh, made wow. a serious financial investment in hiring solved uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. And so oh, we're, a, we're a major backer of hiring solved as well as uh-huh. talent tech labs. And so uh-huh. um, I get some inside scoop on some of the coolest new tools coming out uh, because of one of these associations that we've got, which is really fun. So I saw a question about asking about uh, other uh, bots that I'm interested in. I don't know if you've uh, looked at Ideal, but Ideal um, does some amazing resume screening and uh, actually takes some of the bias out of it, which is really cool. So you put Ideal on any database and it will match candidates uh, to your jobs um, and stack rank them and uh, and take the bias out of the process and give you a list that is completely unbiased, which is really cool. The only problem, problem, and I think I say this almost every week, is we are still recruiting on the ability of the the basis of someone's ability to write a CV or a resume. Yes, correct. Uh, Absolutely. We need to take that bias out because it's like they're really hard to write. But how do you take that out? What's your suggestion? Well, so if you have access, if you have access to the open web, though, yeah, right, you have access to the open web, Mm -hmm. then you can find other data, right? That that's what hiring solve does. You can find other data to Mm -hmm. add to that candidate's resume to create a more holistic picture. Yeah, right. And so Mm -hmm. maybe you're good at gaming that system as well. Well, you know what? If so, I want to hire you. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Look honestly, or go find a recruiter that can write a good CV. I can't. I'm terrible. Oh, CVs resume. are terrible. Resumes are, are are the worst documents ever, right? They're these yeah. things that we copied from yeah. some template yeah. in college, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. then we just duct tape other crap to yeah. Yeah. Yes. ever since. Right? And um, no yeah. one, of those, one of those really big uh, job board aggregator companies that we all know, like mm-hmm. I'm trying to win, um, yep. has got some actual like paper advertisements on the wall in the train stations over here, and it hmm. shows a... CV or a resume, and they're so bad. I keep wanting yes. to take a photo of them going, you're telling people to write that? Like, mm. there's yep. no self-promotion. There's no achievements. There's no uh, what I'm bringing to the company. I'm just like, mm. Mm. 
Mm. No, there's nothing Bye -bye, interesting mate. at all. It's having a mob round. <laughs> uh, so uh, many years ago, I I polled people on LinkedIn and Twitter mm. uh, to ask them the worst things to add to a resume <laughs> or a CV, right? Yeah. And we got a ton of responses sure. from a lot of famous people. Mm. And uh, it turned out to be a really, really good uh, post. And this is many, many years ago. Mm. Yeah. But uh, some of the most obvious things that you would think that everyone puts on CVs were the things that these famous recruiters all said, get that off of there. Right. And so um, the intro, right, mm. for instance, get that off of there. It doesn't make any yeah. difference. Get everything you need someone to see in the top third of the page, fold. right, above the fold, uh, yeah. because recruiters don't look below that. Right. Yeah. And so but LinkedIn's uh, like that now. You don't see the summary. It's two lines. Nobody can be asked opening it. So it's no, the it's most terrible. recent experience is Yeah. That's a really bad um uh thing that they did with that. I, I, I'm not a fan of that at all. Well, so, yeah, particularly if if you're like us, where we've got like quite a lot of experience and no, we, better wanna, media. we want to write a little like, well, I came from here and I've ended up here and now I do this, and then right, right? Because it's, so that's uh, I'm testing. I I'm testing a theory uh, that, and in fact, I, I've, I've actually proven it, that search engines still see that information, yes, right? Sure. Even though you have to toggle do. down. So yeah. it's still important to put it there. Yeah. And Snoopy recruiters will actually go yeah. and check out your summary, Job Seekers. I Snoop listening. Economy. Right. And, <laughs> and Snoop, Snoopy Job Seekers will uh, also do the same uh, mm. for you, you recruiters. So absolutely keep your summary information there. Mm. And we will get... LinkedIn to bring that back in a better yeah. way at some mm. point. It's going to happen, I think. Yeah. I think the biggest shame is the embedded media under that summary because that's where you're yeah. actually put cool stuff you've done. It's not just for that employer or that employer. That's right. So, it's, so it's, the other thing that I recommend there is to create another job that is mm. sort of like your second summary. Okay. Mm. So in your experience, create another job that says Craig's summary or something like that. I put it all Ooh. under talent net basically. Yeah. But don't recruiters search current companies sometimes and current job title as opposed yeah, to previous? So absolutely. You might miss that. Well, you're, not your current. you're saying but, put as your second, maybe. Well, you can have two oh, current maybe. jobs. Yeah, true, true. Three oh, current jobs. Good point. That'll teach me for thinking out loud when I'm jobs tired. On LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> Mr. Raw. Absolutely. Hack yeah. the LinkedIn profile. Yeah. We That's could have right. a, whole show, a whole show on this one time. Yes, uh, we, we totally could. In fact, uh, you guys may remember this. Uh, Jason Seiden and I started the first ever LinkedIn uh, certified training company in North America. Mm. And we were, I think, the first company ever asked to train uh, LinkedIn's salespeople on how to use LinkedIn better. That's hilarious. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think you could do something on um, recruiters presenting themselves better on there. Like literally that, as opposed to the <clears throat> hack, which I know Chris is talking about. Or maybe you're talking yeah. about it from a marketing point of view, but the not hacking it to get information, more the hacking it to present yourself right. Going back uh, to yeah. that, look well, like a recruiter was talking to, personal brand thing that we started with. One of the things that I teach uh, in in the workshops that I still do, on our, this is great. So my company, Allegis Global Solutions, is is a great employer because they give me all this amazing leeway to still do talent net and still go do mm -hmm. training and workshops for uh, companies all over the place for their recruiting and sales team. So I get wow. to do sales kickoffs and all kinds of fun stuff. And they give me tons of leeway to do this. So I still do these workshops on a regular basis. But you'll notice in my summary, right in the middle, it says, wow. first and foremost, I'm the father of three amazing boys. And you can usually find us near Grapevine Lake uh, outside of Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. right. And so right there off the bat, somebody gets to know me better than they get to know the next guy who's all very buttoned down with his bullet points, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. right. So I'm more identifiable. I'm more personable. Um, I'm more of a 3d person. And I, that's what I recommend to both salespeople and recruiters to get something personal in your own profile, in your summary, okay, even in your question. experience now. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, also, what about, we always talk about recruiters having great LinkedIn profiles and a lot of them do have good ones because they live on there. Um, yeah. but what about hiring managers? It's amazing how many hiring managers have terrible profiles. Like hiring no managers are the worst. Hiring managers yeah. are But they're not looked at by seekers, right? So we the problem with hiring managers is they, it's very hard to change hiring manager behavior. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. And I'll tell you about it in a second. Mm. But if you, if you check out, um, 
most hiring managers profiles, you learn a couple of things very quickly. Hiring managers are not good at two things, hiring and managing. <laughs> right? Most hiring managers are in their job because they were yep. good at their old job, yep. right? Not because they're really great managers or right. really good at hiring, right? right? They were good uh, business analysts or whatever they were before they became a hiring manager. Yep. Um, and so we don't give them much training, right? We don't send them to MBA uh -huh. school uh -huh. to become better managers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, maybe they get their PMP, which makes them a decent project manager, but that's different. Yeah. You should have people for that. Uh, yeah. So yeah. the hiring part is what recruiters really have to counsel managers on yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, and really get them to work on their own profiles. Even if you, the recruiter, have to do the profile for that manager. I've done that before. <laughs> I, I do it all the time. There are plenty of things you can do. Not a problem. Yeah. But the other thing you, that you can do is, as Chris Raw was saying, uh, hack the system. And you can do that with a thing called... So... Uh, LinkedIn actually put a name on this. They liked what I did so much. It's called job tagging, right? So mm -hmm. first of all, you need to have a few things in your resume near mm -hmm. each other because mm -hmm. both LinkedIn and Google use proximity, right? In yeah. search terms. Mm -hmm. So your name near your company's name, mm -hmm. right? Near the skill or keyword that you want to be known for yeah. and near a location, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go Google LinkedIn training Dallas, or employer branding strategy, Dallas. Right. I'll be the first, even if you're not connected to me, I'll be like mm -hmm. the first non-paid result you get mm -hmm. for several yeah. reasons. And I don't pay for any ads ever. Yeah. I've never paid for any placement for yeah. any stuff like that. It's all organic. And so multiple places in your resume, I do it at the bottom of my summary. Mm -hmm. I do it in my headline. I do it in my job titles. And I do it at the bottom of each of my jobs. I have this keyword bundle list that LinkedIn doesn't feel like violates their terms of service. They love it and actually named it job tagging. And they asked yeah. me to teach it to their, their sales teams and, uh, and write, you know, blog posts about it for them. Just going back to your hiring manager thing for a moment. Last night, um, my friend Sue Ingram spoke and she opened the second half of Disrupt HR London. And she was talking about exactly that. And I'm actually going to share the link, which is a little bit cheeky to the Facebook live, but it is exactly on what you're talking about. It's only five minutes. I cannot recommend enough because it goes into that thing of how we promote someone and then like forget about them. Yes. It's just really do. cool. I'm just going to chuck the link over there. So just check out Sue She's first pretty well after my intro, so you can't miss her. Katrina, do you know about the uh, salary history ban situation we're going through here in North America? No, I don't think so. All right. So companies and um, municipalities, states and cities are starting to ban the asking of how much money do you make? Oh, yes. No, I do process, know about that. Yes, yes, right? yes. Uh, and so I actually had to actually implement that with CA Technologies. We were one of a handful right. of companies like Adobe and a few others yep. that voluntarily jumped ahead of hmm. that process to say, we're just not going to ask that question across the board. Right. Um, and it was okay with the recruiters, believe it or not. We had to write guidelines and roll it out and say mm. to the recruiters, you can't ask this anymore. The oh, hardest know. thing to change was the hiring managers. Mm. It was really, really difficult because they have budgets, right? And yeah. they feel like negotiating that salary adds to their ability to manage their budget. And so that's that's mm. the toughest but it's like, uh, behavior to change. If you've been at your company for a little while and you started on a lower salary and you haven't had a promotion so your salary might be down, but if your market rate is substantially more now, why should you say what you were previously on to end up getting negotiated down again? Like if their budget is we can pay sixty to eighty thousand dollars, and you were on forty, but you want that sixty, why not? Like I don't know. Well, oddly okay. enough, most people will tell some version of the truth or something pretty close to the truth. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I've ever actually the, said. The majority of the time, you do get a fairly straight answer. Mm -hmm. um, and you can tell when you're not getting a straight answer or people think they can tell. But uh, I don't think but, I've actually ever had to tell. Maybe that's not allowed here. I don't know. No, I it is. It's absolutely it's like, oh, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the reality is if you're a woman and you've been making, you know, 15 to 20% less than a man forever, yeah, but you're doing the same work, right? Yeah. Um, if someone right. asks you what your salary history is, well, that's really used to keep you in that same, that mm -hmm. same band. And yeah. if you can do the job that pays in this band, you mm -hmm. should be paid in this range, regardless of yeah. your salary history. 
Yeah. Uh, yep. And so that's the rule. It works the opposite way too. I love are signing up though to say we pay the same, male, female, you get the same. Yeah, I love that. And that's and that's happening. In fact, um, yeah. it's getting outlawed in whole countries now. So uh, it, it's a little crazy. But if you think mm -hmm. about it, it works the opposite way too. Think about all the job seekers that come back into the market after mm -hmm. they've been a CEO or a really high level person that yeah. just want to do interesting work, and they don't care how much they get paid, but they're discriminated yeah. against because mm -hmm. they're too high level. Um, oh and my gosh! So my sister, all the time, event management company for twenty years. She, it, it's all become ridiculous in Australia with the, the way events are rung. And she just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go and work in-house. But the worst thing was people kept interviewing her. And then because they were intimidated by her skills, because she's so good, just going, oh, no, no. And you're like, why are you wasting her time in the first place? If you know damn well she's a higher level than you. That's frustrating right. as well. So um, my recommendation to those folks control, yeah, yeah. is dumb down your resume a bit, right? You can change yeah. your job title to whatever you want. It's not a legal thing because no. your job title is basically what you tell the outside world you do. Yeah. Um, and but nobody knows what internal. An interview as well. <laughs> well but no one asks you what you were making before. Then your no, odds they, they, of being fit into that salary range are better. It was her describing what she would do. So they'd say, well, what did you I used to do? And of saying. course, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, you, you you have to bring it down a level to mm, to meet the job that you want to actually do. Yeah. You should be doing that anyway. I mean, but all jobs. If you're a really authentic person, that's really hard to do. If you're a really authentic person, you shouldn't tell everyone everything that's in your head. Okay. I don't care how authentic you are. You don't have to say everything. Damn it. <laughs> Transparency <laughs> doesn't mean full disclosure. But I think you were gonna Transparency just... and full disclosure are totally different. Uh, I think you were just going to touch on this, but um, that's one thing I think job seekers do wrong on LinkedIn. They have all these keywords of what they're doing now and not the job they want. I think that's, that's correct. So yeah. one of the things you can and should do is go look at all the job descriptions um, that you'd be interested in doing and find all the common keywords and mm -hmm. utilize oh, those right. in my in my keyword uh, process there mm -hmm. and put them at the very top of your resume, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of a summary, just a keyword list interested in and experienced with these things. Okay. Mm. So that doesn't say you've done all those things. Maybe you're currently doing a project on your yeah. own to learn those things. Right. And that's another thing, right? If you don't have experience in a certain skill, start a project, start a research project yeah. about that skill, document it and list it as experience on your resume. Mm. Yeah. As she, one of the speakers last night, um, looking to get more female engineers with Ruby skills and blah, blah, blah. When she started, they did ridiculous things like you needed eight years of experience in Ruby and something else. And actually, they didn't. Who has that? They didn't need mm -hmm. that at all, right? But they didn't need yeah. that. And the right. hilarious thing was, so she went to Stack Overflow, got how many people, like how many women there were, and then broke it right down. And it turned out there were 107 people <laughs> that had eight years experience <laughs> and had Ruby yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And she just went, really? You wonder why we're not recruiting women? But she just right. broke it down like that. And then, of course, flipped it and changed because she said, we can teach them that. We don't have to bring people well, in. And, Ruby's not, not, we, and they didn't Ruby's even have a degree. To have, another one. Yeah. If you have good development skills, if you've got even .NET skills, you can learn Ruby. If you, yeah. I mean, Half whatever. of the code is self-learn anyway. And yeah. they share code all over the place. They're shocking. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Uh, yeah. Nowadays, with you know all the, um, all the groups that we have available to us to share code and things yeah. like that. Sorry. Nobody <laughs> writes their own code from scratch anymore right it's right. you start with you start with borrowed code every time yeah so it's not like you know you have to be the best uh code writer in order to do a really great job these days yeah mm -hmm. no yep absolutely all right so uh there is an article on my linkedin profile about oh, the top ways to uh connect with uh tech talent and yeah. it's Tools and strategies. So if you oh, go to my LinkedIn go. profile, it's one of the articles. Engaging. And that, the one on Twitter. Yeah. I apologize if I'm moving around. A very smelly Springer has just arrived back in again. <laughs> what? Pictures. I oh, he's like. Come on, pull that dog up there. Hey, up here. Come here. Up here. I don't know if he'll go. No, he's refusing to move. <laughs> Normally he comes up, doesn't he? Where's Bloodcat? We're missing Bloodcat. He's actually no. sleeping. Craig, <laughs> you've got a new a new puppy. Is that going to be one of your three things now? Well, if you can see back here, there's, there's one of my other puppies. Yeah. That's Derby. Derby is our, Derby's our existing puppy. Hi, Derby. 
Uh huh. I don't think he's yeah. liking my screen being up. I might be able to get Daisy in here. Okay. Did you put her in? Here. Oh, right. Now I can get Daisy in here. She's put up so she won't bark. It's okay. She's a little here. barky these oh, days. Thank you. She's still cute though. Here, come, um, say, come say hello. We're not even sure oh, what she is. Go. Oh, hello. There we go. Oh, he's so <laughs> handsome. Oh, my God, he smells. I don't want to know what he was in. Yeah, sorry. He's just he's just come back from his walk, and I'd say he's been in a. Ugh, anyway, uh -huh. <laughs> it's the end of my day. I'll I'll go wash it off. <laughs> so nice. we're gonna have a couple more minutes. I I should, uh, the chat just went really quiet, which is very odd. Yeah, they're just watching what our, our antics here. I think at this yeah, point, they're, like, they're oh, checking out your LinkedIn profile and copying. Yeah, <laughs> copying all the, the, the is copy and paste of Craig's profile. So. so, can we talk real quick about college football? No. Uh, yes. No, no, we can't uh, because you stood me up for dinner over football, and I will never I know, forgive I you. I want to show that. you something. This is the uh, Oklahoma wow. Sooners Santa Claus. Okay, uh, he used He's, to dance and stuff, but he's so old now that he doesn't work anymore. Uh, but. I am having a Sooners Christmas because uh, Oklahoma is going to play in the Rose Bowl on mm -hmm. uh, January 1st against Georgia. And if we beat Georgia, then we'll play the winner of the other championship game uh, in um, Atlanta on uh, January 8th for the national championship. So wow. Boomer Sooner, I just want to say that. Nice. And, uh, I don't even know what any of that meant. Oh, I know Me that I'm going to be somewhere <laughs> in Ecuador or Peru at that time. Anyway. <laughs> so you're saying you it. won't be watching? No, that's no, strange. I will never be watching a game that involves lots of padding like that. No. Anyway, <laughs> but we can argue that out when I see you on the 31st of January, 1st, Feb, 2nd, Feb, something like that. Yes, at yeah. social, recruiting, social Recruiting Strategies Conference yes. com. In San Francisco. In San yeah, Francisco. Katrina's it's talking about being human, right? And I'm doing a panel on um, career sites versus corporate sites and partnering with marketing. And there's about 15 other fantastic speakers. It's yeah, no, it's good. I think I'll take the agenda up the side there somewhere. Yeah. As well. Yeah, there, so, there always are good speakers and good fun at this event. And uh, we, just come hang out with us, right? Because we're going to have a blast. Yeah. And this is actually, I'm sorry to say, I'm actually just looking at the calendar, our last show until January. Wow. Ooh. I know, and that's completely my fault because I am pissing off on holiday for a month. So first in six years before any of you are jealous. So there's no work-life balance in this household. But anyway, so thank you very much for being our last guest. Yes, thank you, Greg. We'll and see and you for dropping soon. all of those knowledge bombshells. Unbelievable. Great to be uh, on with both of you, and yeah. you're, uh, you're welcome to uh, ask me back anytime. I am always anxious to hang out with you guys. It's cool. great. Awesome. Cool, cool. Thanks so much, Craig. Thanks, Greg, yep. and we shall see all of you in the new year. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. Cheers, yeah, everybody. Everyone.